None of VPN Partners, Bob Kendall, or any of its officers, directors, employees, other personnel, representatives, agents, or independent contractors is, in such capacities, a licensed financial advisor, a registered investment advisor, or a registered broker-dealer. None of VPN Partners or its personnel gives investment or financial advice or makes investment recommendations, nor are any of them in the business of affecting trades or directing client equity accounts or giving futures trading advice tailored to any particular client situation. Nothing contained in VPN Partners broadcasts on its websites or in its written materials constitutes a solicitation, recommendation, promotion, endorsement or offer by others described above of any particular security, other investment product, transaction, or investment. Copyright 2014, VPN Partners, all rights reserved. Terms of use apply. Reproduction, adaptation, distribution, public display, exhibition for profit, or storage in any electronic storage media in whole or in part is prohibited under penalty of law. Good morning, everyone. Monday again. Seems like every day is Monday sometimes. Uh, week keeps restarting. Uh, lots going on. Uh, this week is very possibly going to be a, a big week for the markets. I think uh, it's funny when you're writing daily commentary last Friday. I thought it was talking about this uneventful week, and in the final day, it was more eventful than the rest of the week, I guess, is how it works. As soon as yeah. you say something, it's like watching a football game, and they say, well, this guy hasn't thrown an interception in 14 games, and the next play is an interception. So uh, anyway, the uh, uh, the markets are under pressure a little bit. I think everybody's really waiting for the Federal Reserve, of course, and, of, of course, the uh, the vote in Scotland, I guess, is pretty big. Uh, they're, they're sure... Uh, it's interesting to watch the European TV while this is going on. They have, uh, anyway, there, there's, a, there's a lot going on from the standpoint of uh, um, the sides are easy to tell, the bias even by the folks talking on the TV. The, uh, the guys in London can't figure out why Scotland would want to break loose, but um, anyway, and all the, uh, the fear of economic collapse and the, the whole world's going to end, probably not going to be the case, but We'll see how it all plays out. But I think the real thing to watch this week is going to be a federal, uh, the FOMC meeting and see what comes out, see if we do get a change in logic. But as I mentioned in commentary, the it appears to me that finally, maybe finally, that the Fed is going to be responding to the market, not the market responding to the Fed. And like I said, I mentioned this on Friday's uh, show, that this is the way it usually works. The Fed doesn't, it can influence the market, but most of the time it's responding to the market. And we haven't seen that for a while, I guess, since the, the crisis, since um, Hank Paulson came out with the first TARP program. And that was pretty much the beginning of all this stuff. So maybe, just maybe, normalization will come back and the Fed will start to uh, uh, figure out, uh, I guess the last five years, the tail's been wagging the dog. So maybe the dog will finally wag its tail, and we'll see how that all plays out. The um, as far as uh, overnight, uh, was a couple of stories that that kind of popped out. There was a Bloomberg a Bloomberg story that came out that intuitively we've been talking about this on several shows, but it said that 47 percent of the stocks in the Nasdaq were down 20 percent or more, and that would explain. Uh, and also that went across to the Russell. And even some of the, a lot of the IPO stocks that have come out in the last, I guess, three to four months are all underwater. And it's, it's interesting because we've been talking about how this has been a large cap rally and dominated by the S&P 500. So if you turn on CNBC, because everybody that comes on CNBC works for a mutual fund for the most part. Uh, one guy I saw this morning, just had it on for a few minutes, he was talking about the... Uh, you know, there's been a lot of selling already, so basically it's all over, and you can buy again, it's all okay. I don't think that's the case. I think we're seeing a constant deterioration, and ultimately what we're going to see in the markets is that the large caps will start to roll over, and I think we've seen the beginnings of that. As we go through some of the technical stuff today, 
there is a 60% probability that the high of this market is in place at the 2011, I think 0.17 to be exact. I think that's going to be it's certainly the high for this month. And depending on how this month finishes, which we've still got a couple weeks to go, that will tell us a lot about the configuration of the markets. If you recall, last month I was talking about how this big reversal occurred. So we had a lower low or higher high and we closed at the highs of the month. And typically when that happens at a historical high or at the high of a run, it's usually just that it is the high. So we were able to spike above that. That number was 2005 and change. We did hit uh, 2011 uh, and now we've, we've seen a reversal. And while it's not collapsing of anything of that sort, there doesn't seem to be any reasons for the markets to, to rally up. And we had, we had a couple reports coming out. Uh, what was it, uh, manufacturing report, I guess the uh, survey. What was that, Mitch? Yeah, the Empire State Manufacturing Survey came in. Uh, the consensus was 15.9, the actual was 27.54. So that's a huge beat there. And then at the same time, we also had the in industrial production come in with a consensus on that was 0.3%, actual was minus 0.1%. So this goes back again to the story where uh, the people that are going, they're creating these surveys off of feelings, uh, those are beating. The actual data is coming in as misses though. Yeah, I guess that does say something about market sentiment, but you know, the, the reality is, I think when they took autos out, manufacturing was up. So that, that's, they always like to take some component out so it sounds good. Um, right. I, I never understood that. It's been a, been doing this a long time and still after 35 years still don't understand it you'd think by now I'd have figured it out or some explanation would have happened but the bottom line is this is a thing that we've been seeing folks for for a while now is these mixed reports just like Mitch was just saying is you know the survey stuff is beats the actual numbers don't and I mentioned also in commentary that bad news could become bad news because think about what bad news has been. Bad news means the Fed's gonna do something. Well, I don't think the Fed has any bullets left. They wanna get out of this, this uh, stimulus thing that they've been in for a long time. I think they want the markets to, to survive on their own. And, and, and the reality is it has worked to stabilize the economy, but it hasn't worked to get elements going back into U.S. economy that we're used to seeing. And, and it's even then, it's, it's the way it, it's always been. I mean, I can remember going through uh, all the way back to 1974 and, and how the recessions were then and 1980, and there have been many of them since. And they all have different characteristics. They're all the same but different. And uh, so you, you kind of have to uh, uh, realize that the economics of what's going on sometimes is it doesn't reveal what the market sentiment is or what what is likely to occur from this point forward and then there's always that last little thing that the markets will always are looking looking forward and if that's the case then you know what we're what we've seen is about all we're going to get i mean it's just not a very robust environment and and it's continuing uh, the uh, talk about the Ukraine for just a second because it's continuing these sanctions they keep putting on keeps just hammering uh, economic output in Europe I mean it's crazy what what's going on there, there uh, it looks like to me it's one of those things where they keep losing so uh, was there anything else out there Mitch that we were talking about we usually have a little chat before the show comes on to no, I think it, everything else is going to be about uh, talking about what the database did. So we'll get to that in a, in a minute. Okay. Yeah, I'll go ahead and let's get going in on, on some of the market stuff here. I've got uh, what I want to show. Here's the story on Bloomberg I, I brought up here. Record S&P mass 47% NASDAQ in bear market. So this, you know, this really is what, what we've been talking about for a while. This, this is exactly the, the issue that's been going on. And so uh, I talked about that already, but there, there are quite a few things that, that are showing that there are some underlying issues with the economy and the small cap stocks, tend, like I've said, I don't know, maybe 15 times now, or who knows how many times over the last couple months, is that the small caps let us up, they tend to get overdone, but they also may be the, the things that are gonna lead us down. And you know, we, I was noticing this morning that the, um, that, the, that the Russell was down like one, over 
while the S&P was down 0.7. So let's go ahead and get to the to the charts here and start looking at what's going on here. This is the same pattern that I, I was talking about on Friday. It's just a continuation. We just have a, a little more downside. We're, we're trading at 1980.24. The S2 support is 1978.55. The, the low today has been 1978.48. Missed it again by seven cents. Uh, but that is a key number. I, I, and I'm not sure I emphasize that on commentary, but this is a key number in today's pattern. A breach of that level would suggest that we would we would go substantially lower and probably move toward the uh, 19 the 74 to 71, which is today's numbers. But then ultimately, this uh, you'll see over here on the right hand side. There's a couple objectives that that have been Fibonacci objectives that are coming out by the the VPM pattern finder. And just to draw these out right here, this is 1924, the top one, and then the two lower numbers are 1891 to 1874. So this pattern, while it looks somewhat benign as it's going sideways, is developing quite a bit of potential downside pattern risk that's here. And as we step through the charts, we're gonna go, I guess we'll call it bottom up, look at the daily and we'll go to weekly and monthly. As we go through the, these charts, you can see that there is a, a, these numbers make sense to the higher level charts anyway. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at, yeah, one other thing is the, the PPMs have turned negative or flat and the key number here, which I, I didn't put up here, let me bring it over here, let me move this over. The, uh, the key number here is 1972-74 is the 40 period moving average, so if we can, we're actually through the 21, which is 1991-95. I talked about the 1990.60 number, which was a pivot number that came out of some Fibonacci work. But the bottom line is, these are all, there's a cluster of numbers around uh, that come off several different levels. And what I look for when I see a clustering of elements that maybe moving averages, uh, Fibonacci numbers, and a number of things. Then we see in combination with a uh, declining uh, PPM1 is at at point, uh, let me just bring it up here. They're at the very bottom of this, of this chart, of this table here. And PPM1 is minus 12, and then 0, 0.5 on 2, and 0, 0.2 on, on PPM3. When you start to see this type of configuration, there's a lot of vulnerability to the downside. And there doesn't appear to be anyone rushing in to buy this thing today, even though if you start to add up the, the last two sessions, we're down about 16, 17 handles on this thing. The weekly charts that are out here are, um, we're also seeing a rollover there where 0 0.06, which is basically flat, that, let me bring that up so you can see it, the, the average is 1973.36, so the 40 period moving average was 71, 40 something, 73.35 is the 10 week, and those two, that area is going to be key. If we get through the 10 week moving average or the 40 day, depending on how you want to look at this, that's the cluster. The next level down is 1954, but from a Fibonacci standpoint, 1944 is key. And I, I mentioned another number that is out there that is a major pivot number, which is uh, the 1962.70 number. That is right in the middle of this range, but it, it it's the the more or less the midpoint of the high low of 05 to the 2011 high lows there and this is a, a major pivot zone but once we get through 70 71 72 right in that range there especially on a closing basis this this market's going to be looking to the that 1944 with the the next support at 1924 and i mentioned this several weeks ago there's not a chance that we're not going to get through a retest of that 1905 level and one of the things that happens when you see a market that goes down 4% like we did in July, 
up 6%, now we're starting to fade again. If we get down below that, that 05 level, then that will be a pretty serious breakdown. It's possible that that level holds and we get into some kind of sideways zone, but we'll see how, how the configuration sets up. Right now, it looks like we're going to challenge a 71, 72 level that I just mentioned, uh, bases the daily and the weekly charts. And if that breaks down, then, then we'll be able to make some other assumptions about what's going to have and happen from there and the probabilities will start to change once some of those numbers start to happen right now they're uh, the 70 71 60 to the the 70 uh, 73 72 here uh, sorry wrong number here uh, 73 33 is the 10 week moving average so the those two averages are are going to represent some support just from from the standpoint that they're that they're there but they really have no momentum because of the PPM one is 0.06. It's very vulnerable. Matter of fact, there's a 70% probability that when it's reached, it will be penetrated just because of the lack of momentum. And I've talked about this and kind of a continuing education from the VPM uh, process viewpoint is that if you have a, a moving average, the angle of attack, if it's up 0.25 or greater, then there's a very a small literally a 30 30 percent or less probability it would go through that when you're flat like this 0 0.06 there's it's the inverse of that it's very vulnerable to a downside and in fact normally it will be penetrated next let's go over to take a quick look at the the monthly graph and you'll notice uh i was uh hooping and howard last week because one of the things that happened was we saw the PPM1, let me bring that up so you can see this here. The PPM1 is at 0.92 now, and I was looking for it to drop under 1% and start this, this uh, angle where the 20, 21 week moving average is going to move towards the 10. And once the 10 slows down, it, it's at 0.92 now. It's really, if we stay at this level for the next couple of weeks, this is going to tell us that there's even a, a bigger sign. This is how, and I've talked about this before, but just to review it, if you haven't seen the show before, it's the first time you're on. The, the patterns that have unfolded every time at the 2000 high, the 2008 high, is that is the first sign that the 10 month moving average starts to slow down. And if you've looked at moving average strategies, crossovers, and those type of things. Crossover is a point where you start to see the trend start to signal that it's going to decline. But when you're using the PPMs, it gives you a little more insight into what the patterns are likely to do as far as a continuation. And with this 0.92, this is just the beginning. If we saw, if you, if you go back a little further, I don't have enough data on the screen right now. Um, but if you go back to the 2000, this thing started to happen about three months, one to three months before the actual rollover of the market and the market was to penetrate. The market penetrated the moving averages almost four months before the moving averages crossed over. So if you, the crossover point on um, the 10 and 21 crossover, that'll probably be a minor low, not a beginning of a trend. A lot of people use crossovers as indications, and they they are an indication, but they're they're usually very lagged in far as as figuring out when the trend is ending. And in this case, we're 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 seeing that slowdown and some acceleration of the slowdown. It's uh, this updates real time, so it's now 0.93. We were just 92 a second ago, but it it's changes as the markets. Uh, trade and it's pretty sensitive right now, but it's gonna it would have to move back above the 19 I, I think it's 1996 98 to get this thing back up at 1% it might even be over to uh, 2000 to get us over there so that that doesn't appear to be very likely at this time the uh, the other the other number that's going to play out later in the pattern that is going to be significant is if this market continues to break down, we get down to this 1891, 1874 number that I was talking about earlier. The next level below that is all the way down to the 1700 number. It would be closer to 1780 or so. 
and if the market gets down there, then that that's going to there's going to be some other challenges. And 200 points right now is about 10 percent. So everybody will be uh, talking about we're we're finally in correction mode or something. Uh, that that's likely to happen here. Whether or not it goes straight down, whether we see the month of October really start the, the acceleration and how this last quarter plays out. And like I've said, uh, philosophically, we're all going to wake up one day and try to figure out when all this crud happened. How do we get $18 trillion uh, you know, deficits and all the things that have happened? And you know, it's, I saw a report the other day that the Feds had the biggest, uh, most income that they've ever had, $2.7 trillion or something so far to date. And meanwhile, they're still behind the ball, $568 billion. So they spent uh, over half a trillion more than what they brought in. So it's not not sustainable. We'll wake up, figure it out one day, and and right now uh, we'll probably go ahead and talk about a few things that are are important, like looking at the the U.S. dollar and some of those situations. Let's go ahead and um, let me bring up some some of this as well. Um, before I've got the tenure up here, I'm going to. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead while I'm here. Just go ahead and talk about what's going on. We're seeing the 10-year yields move up. We saw a big increase on, in the last last day on Friday. We saw a big, big move up the last day of the week, and we went all the way back to the 261 level. And I talked about a week ago, last Monday, I talked about if the 252 level is taken out, we we're going to. 262 to 268. Well, we we're there, and now there's be further consolidation, and I suspect that the bond market is going to be on hold as we as we start to see the you know until we see more from the FOMC meetings and see if we actually do get a change in language. But like I said, I I actually think that the dog wants to wag the tail here, and the market market participants uh, and I've talked about this for some time are finally going to get to the point where they are going to start making decisions. So whether you want to call them the bond vigilantes or whoever, these things are, are going to happen. They happen everywhere. They happen here. It, it's just a force of the market. So this is a daily chart that we're looking at here. Let me go full screen and, and let's take a look at the weekly patterns here. And this is probably more revealing from this standpoint, we're starting to break above these these moving averages here. I bring that up. You're you're looking at the uh, the moving averages here are uh, two two uh, forty six, which was we broke above. Here is the medium aver average now is two point five one, which is we're above that, and we the two sixty three point three level is the last average in the in the pattern and one of the things that was there and we're still in a trend mode if you notice um you know i need to i need to do something real quick here and uh th this will make my life easier in talking about this bear with me one second just want to I want to change something so it's updating real time it's they're not doing it right now so bear with me this is this is going to make life a lot better I'm not sure why they weren't set here take me but yeah so the 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 pattern uh, that's happening on the PPMs are actually getting more negative it, it looks like the charts are going to uh, go go up here so as soon as I close this, I'll have all the values here. There they go. So so now what you're seeing is the, let me get to the right level here. You're seeing the PPM up on the weekly at 12, let's see here, we are 0 0.30, we're point, uh, minus 0 0.14 and minus 0.26, so the 21 and 40 period moving averages still have some downward pressure. The 40 is still in a trend mode down. So that's the 263.3 level, which is exactly where the market stalled so far. So we may see it continue to stall 
at this level. We may get some backfilling in here, but the bottom line, that's going to be your trigger point. Above that level, you're 272, 278 plus. And I believe if you get above this level, you're well on your way to go back to, to 3%. I saw a report that virtually no one believes the market that the, the bonds will go to above, the 10 year will go above 3% until 2015. They may end up being surprised by that. May happen uh, sooner than that. But there, there is, a, I think that once this thing starts to get some traction, this trend is going to explode. They usually, once they break out, really go quickly. And like I said, if I'm right and the dog waits the tail again, then you're going to see just that. Moving on to looking at some of the, the currency stuff real quick. The, the dollar is flat today, but we've seen a nice increase in the dollar. And I think it's interesting, uh, even though we have the $18 trillion deficit, that the there's an attraction to the U.S. dollar. It primarily is a interest rate differential. And if we start to raise, our rates start to go, you're going to see more flow in there, even if European rates start to increase, which they have a bit. It, it, this will also keep, keep a, a very strong bid in the dollar. And I've kind of went on and on about this. I, there was a time where I thought the U.S. dollar strengthening would be positive for our market. I don't see that being the case right now. I think the interest rates are showing that there is some pressure to come in into this market once rates start to, to rise again. But I think that the barriers of 263 are going to be important. We'll call it really a close over 263, 264 on the 10 year is going to trigger more buying here and it's going to trigger more selling in the market for right now you know there's no one's going to make any major moves on on anything right now until after the fmmc meeting and the janet yellen press conference on wednesday so uh, there's uh one other thing i wanted to touch on before we we move on um this is uh somewhat I think an interesting perspective. Um, if you recall, Morgan Stanley came out. This is a Dow Jones, but it, it all is relative uh, to expectations. This is just about, uh, this goes back, this chart goes back to 1925. The 1929 crash is this little blip. It's behind me. Let me get off the screen so you can see this fully here. And you can see it looks flat for many years, but the, the bottom line is, um, this, what we've seen in the stock market in the U.S., um, I think, I, I don't know if I know where it is quick enough to, to bring it up, if I do, but this looks like the tulip mania chart, to be honest with you. And it's funny because most people that haven't really understood much about, uh, I guess maybe you haven't you know of the tulip mania, but you probably don't know what it was really about. Well, it wasn't about tulips. It was about the monetary policy that was going on at the time and how the inflationary uh, craze got on and they were speculating in anything to keep up with some of the monetary issues. And uh, I, I think uh, maybe someday if we, we get really bored and have nothing to talk about, we'll bring that up. But it's, the, it's interesting to talk about that because the if you look, what are the monetary policies today that are going on? And they're not necessarily inflationary, but there's a lot of speculation. The whole point of the monetary strategy that the Federal Reserve has been executing is to get people to take on risk. The theory was, you know, you got all these uh, crazy Keynesians running around that were going to inflate the, the markets through everything they've done through government spending and this in, uh, creating this massive fiat currency that we have. and But this is what we get. And to expect the expectation for this thing just to continue higher here seems somewhat ridiculous. When, you, when I look at this chart, I, I have a hard time being bullish about anything in this country. And it's, it's one of those things where there is still uh, the, the angle of attack of these moving averages here. Let me make this uh, spread it out just a little bit. See if I can get over here, over the far side of the screen. They are straight up. There's still 
substantial support under the market. So it's not that it's, it's about to happen, the collapse is about to happen today. But we're within one to four months of a major, major top. And I, I keep talking about that. This is th this party is just about over. Maybe we've seen the high prices. Maybe there's another spike. They might have one more little hurrah in it. But there's there's a lot of things that, at least from my viewpoint, that continue to bring in an awful lot of, of risk. And I'm going to bring Mitch up here in a minute because one of the things that is continuing to happen is we're seeing further deterioration in the trends. We're seeing more uh, selling in VPM and probably best to get through that today. I wanted to go through some of these these longer term aspects, but I, I really believe this is this is about the end of the party. And I've talked about this yeah. before, some t sort of generational uh, high that's coming up. So anyway, I've got Mitch on here right now. I'm gonna go over and uh, let's see if we can uh, bring VPM up here. And yeah, let's go ahead and stay in tool right now. Uh, give me one second. Uh, you know, as we've talked about before, every time we go into the weekends, Bob and I have that that conversation towards the end of the day on Friday. You know, just sort of wondering what the the run's going to look like that night. And uh, you know, every now and then we'll get someone that asks on Friday or maybe Thursday. You know, what do you guys think the run's going to look like? And we never know going into uh, the week what what is actually going to take place. So we always look at it just like you guys do. Uh, we stay up pretty late on Friday night, at least, and uh, and see as the orders come in to see what type of activity there's going to be in the database. And so this week we had another fairly substantial run on the database. Uh, as you can see here now, we're only at 39.2% long. So we've we've taken again a, a more bearish stance on the database. Uh, I just pulled up the stats. Uh, so across the board, we had. Uh, 2,149 net cells this last week between the two different trade systems. And if you look at the last six weeks, uh, we've we've actually sold uh, just shy of, of 5,000 securities uh, over the last six weeks. So uh, we took a lot of, of protection uh, about a month ago, back at the beginning of, of August, and now we're seeing more of that protection taking place. And uh, we're, we're just con continuing to, to do the flight to, to safety, flight to to, uh, to cash on a lot of these portfolios, and that, that continues to be the case as, as we go on. One of the things I think that is, is most interesting, and this is what we're gonna see in the dashboard here, is where, where those cells took place. And uh, Bob has, has mentioned it numerous times before uh, that you guys should be looking at these, these charts, because if you really wanna know what's taking place within the database, this is your, your best answer to, uh, best place to go to get that answer. And uh, we always make sure this is uh, updated in time for, for Monday's open. Uh, and you see, you know, right off the bat, we had pretty much broad selling across the board on the stock sector side of things, uh, where we, we trimmed off somewhere between five and, and 7% of all the different individual sectors. So again, a, a broad step back away from the stock side. But I think where the real story this week is, is on the mutual fund side of things. And it's the type of funds that we sold out of. I got an email first thing this morning as I was getting ready to post the commentary from one of the advisors wanting to know, uh, you know, is this the sell in, in Shy legitimate? And it, it absolutely is. And uh, you could see that confirmation just uh, right here on the, the fund chart where you could see on the taxable bond side uh, how we, we sold off an, an immense amount of, of bond uh, funds this week. A third of all the bond funds in our database had sell signals this week. And you can see it's it's and, pretty much across the board, and yeah, that is on the uh, taxable side as well. And that actually goes in in line with what I was talking about just a minute ago, from the standpoint of of what the expectations for Treasury yields are too for to be doing those things. So, um, as I've always said, I've driven by a lot of the things that are coming out of the database, and then when you start to look at the technicals, you get the confirmation. That's exactly what's happening here. Yep. Yeah, and we saw. Uh, we mentioned this, I think, last week or the week before, that uh, we've been out of the high yield space for some time, so it looks like that was a good precursor to that because now all the other uh, taxable bond fund uh, categories are, are starting to catch up to that defensive stance where, you know, this is a, another great example of, you know, as these bond rates are, are starting to rise, that we're getting out of those spaces, we're, we're staying in cash. And in some ways, it's, it's sort of similar to 2007, 2008 in that, uh, we're not just simply seeing a flop over from equities to bonds. We're seeing a, a move away from uh, all these different assets as as the market's unfolding. 
Uh, and in this case, you can see it's there really wasn't a, a safe place in any of the, the taxable bond uh, categories as far as any of these, these categories that were untouched. They all had some pretty sizable liquidation. So if you had those orders uh, for today, definitely go, go ahead and, and submit those because uh, they are valid. And we're going to go through SHI in a, a couple minutes and, and show you what's taking place uh, on that particular uh, security. I mean, but that, that really is the, the story this week. Uh, also, you, you'll notice that we had a, a pretty sizable uh, uh, exit out of the commodity space. Uh, this continues to be uh, another area that we, continues to see weakness. Uh, we, we sold out of gold a while back. Uh, we went through last week a number of different commodities. So if you didn't get a chance to uh, catch the, the broadcast live, I'd encourage you to go ahead and watch that uh, after this broadcast, because you'll see uh, how a lot of these trends just continue to break down. And uh, there, there is no safe haven aside from the dollar at this point uh, within the market. All these, these securities are, are showing a, a decline in trends or at least a loss of momentum on it. And, and VPM is, is significantly taking uh, precaution on, on those securities. Yeah, I just was noticing the uh, municipal bonds are 91% invested yet. So there's still, there's some positive areas to be involved in the bond market yet, but there's a rotation occurring. And typically when we see a rotation occur in some of these elements, it, what will happen is you will get more of a, um, it's a sign of, of things starting to change. Ultimately, probably the muni bond area will be affected but uh, all the taxable stuff is going first as it should. Right. And uh, it's, it's sort of funny, Bob. I was thinking back to how we were at a broker dealer conference about this time last year. And it was sort of the opposite story where we were along all the, the uh, equity positions. Uh, we pretty much owned just about everything under the sun on the mutual fund side, I think. And we didn't own the bond side. Uh, and, and now we've seen that rotation take place where we, we brought on the bonds in the, the later part of 2013, and now we're seeing the, the exits take place throughout this year on the equity side. And the only thing that we do own really at this point is the municipal bond funds. Yeah, because uh, we had a, a, the all weather strategy owned zero bonds. It was, right. it was like 98% invested in stocks. It's exactly where you should be. And uh, you now we're seeing just about everything retreat though on, on those strategies. We're, heavy in cash and as it goes. Yep. Uh, moving along here uh, on the weekly research, uh, what you'll see here, uh, we just had more selling. Uh, we sold off uh, one of the commodities funds as well as the global real estate funds that we track on this. And you'll notice that we had uh, a couple exits across the board uh, in the global uh, iShares that, that we're tracking on this. So again, we're, we're not seeing any new, new trends form uh, on the equity space and across the globe, we're, we're seeing uh, continued exits uh, when it comes to the, the database. Uh, last thing, the globe at a glance, uh, you're seeing continued uh, weakness, uh, especially in Europe, as uh, we get closer to the vote in regards to uh, the UK. Uh, you can see their, their market now is down about 4% on the year in the case of the MSCI iShares uh, United Kingdom. Uh, security that we track. And then as far as the sanctions go, Germany continues to be hit hard with the the, uh, the economic sanctions that they've been trying to place on on Russia as far as the, the EU just trying to, to rein in what's taking place over there. And while yes, Russia's uh, economy, uh, or at least their market has been seeing a, a hit this year, it's it's not not being isolated to just them, or we're seeing it across the board in the Europe space. So, hey, any, any hey Mitch, can you go to like just a month to date to see what I was curious how much of that uh, decline in the UK has occurred this month? Sure. Uh, let me just flip this. So this is uh, this month. So we're we're seeing it flat essentially in Germany. Uh, in the UK, we're we're seeing about down two and a half percent. Most I think that of the really decline, last, probably in the last week. Yeah, in the last two weeks or so. Yes. Yeah, they're they're pretty they're pretty concerned over there about this whole this whole thing. But uh, and this this goes back to the conversation that we've had with a number of advisors that have these international components in their portfolios. You know, these advisors that have constructed MPT type strategies that utilize the the international space. Uh, it's not nec nothing necessarily wrong with using those components, but one of the things you have to be mindful of is that those spaces are not the S&P 500. And even at this point, as we're seeing the weakness emerge in the S&P 500, uh, you know, if you have those international components 
uh, in those portfolios, that's further dragging down the performance of the portfolio, causing you to not line up exactly with what the S&P 500 has. Well, yeah, and, and, and that's once again, like in the fact sheets, why we have the MCI and all the yep. different uh, indices in there, because they're more relevant to what's going on with these particular strategies. That's correct. So, uh, so that's pretty much it there? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you already hit on the fact that we, uh, we just missed uh, or just penetrated, was at the S2 level for the day? Uh, S3 level uh, on the commentary. Yep. Uh, so uh, I guess it was S1. Now they look at it, 1980, uh, 60. So that was the other thing I was going to mention. Uh, but I guess since we have the chart pulled up, uh, you know, when you get a chance, let's pull up Shy and, and see what's okay. going on in that. Yeah, I just realized I didn't talk about the um, these international charts. We're seeing them uptick a little bit. So in spite of these numbers that we just talked about, as far as the the returns go in Europe versus what we're doing, we are seeing some differential start to pick up. And I've talked about over and over, these two charts to me are key. When when this trend is inverted, this goes all the way back to 09, by the way. Uh, when I bring this whole screen up, you'll see this is 09 on the far left going down here. This is uh, the current. When this reverses, then we'll see that there's a lot of money coming out of, out of U.S. and that those those trends are are going to reverse and I don't yeah I won't try to do it because it probably won't work I was going to say I'll try to go to a, a really long term look at monthly trends but um, maybe uh, yeah anyway I'm not going to be able to do that do that I want to uh, I guess it it wouldn't be the end of the world here let's see what happens if I go to monthly and if it switches them both over it does wow there's there's a perspective for you this thing is just yeah since 09 this is straight down the normal prior to this 03 was way up here at uh at these levels so if we just went back to normal that would be that would be huge and these are relationships between the the two but that that pretty much tells you the story and this is what's been going on here and it's all of the cash flow what that tells you on a relative basis has been coming here and this is our markets have done much much better than the European markets there's a really good illustration this is versus the um, uh, which one is this this is actually uh, S&P 500 or is no that the it's S&P 500 versus EFA this one is the EEM here on this chart so do the same thing we'll just put the monthly you'll see just what the uh, the overperformance is it looks exactly the same so when, when you look at these things side side by side here, you can see they're just a huge, uh, just a, a collapse as far as the spread goes. But this this has been a huge, huge trade for everybody. It's sort of like looking at one of these carry trades that, that go on. It's, it's very similar from that standpoint. These carry trades, you just see this money continues to flow and flow and flow until it doesn't. And when it doesn't, there's a multi-year reversal of these trends and that's what I would expect and I, like I said before it doesn't mean that Europe has to get all that much better and in fact there's a they have so many headwinds ahead of them it's pretty much crazy uh, expecting to see any major economic turnaround in Europe so in the reality of life here <laughs> is <laughs> is this is that we may call this the Great Recession but what happened in 2008 absolutely crushed the entire financial network across the planet. And, yeah. and it's going to, it took us, what do we figure out it was 30 some years in, uh, uh, in, the, in the depression to get back. Well, it's going to, and I said this years ago, it's going to be a, at least a 15 year healing process. And now that we've thrown all these other elements in here and with the feds and everybody's, everybody, hey, listen, it's 2014, everybody wants instant gratification. I was at the store the other day and they were out of what I want. I said, no, I want instant gratification. I'll take that one instead because I didn't want to leave without something. And that's just the way people think anymore. If I can't, I, I want what I get. So now if you want an iPhone 6, it's October, I hear, if you didn't already buy it. So the, that's the kind of, that's how, the, how things work. And, uh, you know, from when I look at these charts, it's just uh, these things, when they start to unwind, it's going to take as many years. So right now we've been in this thing since 09 to current. So we're, we've got five and a half. It's just equal to what the bull market is. To unwind all these excesses that have been built here in the U.S. and the cash flows that occurred 
is going to be huge. Uh, it's going to be a, like I said, a multi-year uh, situation. So uh, Mitch is anxiously waiting for me to get over. We'll take a look at 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 Shy here and see what's uh, what's going on. It was interesting because when I built the original ETFDI or the Global Equity One, when I put that together, that was really designed to be, it, it, the shy element in there was supposed to be a place where we were, when, when the markets weren't doing well, we'd probably end up hiding, using that as a another cash element. It's really a cash element. It's a, you know, it's a two to three year piece of paper that's not gonna usually do a lot and you can see since 2012, it's done just that. It hasn't done a lot. And see if I can get some, uh, see if I can blow up this chart at least in the most recent time. It's almost almost impossible. I'm gonna go in and take off uh, some of these techniques just, just so we can hopefully get a, a, a little, better, little better chart here. It's not really helping. Uh, but let me try one more thing. I'm gonna do my best to blow this up there's a little better view of the actual price movement and you see the big down move last week this is the current move and yeah we've been in this range but the if you look down below we've got uh, zero let me bring that up so you can see that we've got 0 0.5 0, uh, 0, 001 and they're basically flat all the averages so We've gotten through that. VPM is a trend following system. It's going to be pretty ad adverse when this type of pattern happens. And what we've seen is it's gotten below these averages, come back, whoop, comes back above there. And it's been in this pattern for some time. Maybe it's a continuation, maybe there's a change. And that's the thing when you have a sideways pattern like this is it's more the same until it changes. And I believe that the way the tenure is structured and you're going to see some changes in the yield curve and I know somebody was I saw uh, something uh, that they said buy the buy the 30 and sell the the threes and the tens and all that so that's that's part of what what's happening is they would look for a flattening of the yield curve and that short-term market this two to three year market this is where a lot of effect will happen when the Fed steps further out. It'll be in the shorter end of the market. So that probably makes sense. As far as a place to park cash, we know that there isn't one. It's uh, you get paid, cash doesn't pay. And that's that's the whole point. And especially like in Europe, we've talked about they got negative rates on their short end. You know, you'd be looking at a negative yield here. And you know, so the the you're just not seeing any anything there to, to go there. I'm gonna I want to format these uh, techniques, turn a couple of things back on. So as we go go forward there, we'll, we'll still have those those numbers out there. So you got, you got some other stuff here to look at, Mitch, real quick? I do. Uh, one of the other ones, uh, your favorite uh, bond guy, uh, Bill Gross and uh, the PIMCO Total Return Bond Fund, I thought would be a good one to, to pull up, PTTRX. Had a fresh sale on that one today on the 1.2 weekly model. Okay. Alrighty. And which model is that? 1.2 weekly. That is actually okay. There, yeah, that's what's on. Okay. So it's not showing because it just happened today, but this this is, uh, so once again, we're looking at the uh, uh, treasury yields and uh, although PIMCO has probably made as many bad bets as they made good ones in, in the last couple of years. Uh, but the, the bottom line is we're, we're seeing, we'll see another zero out once the, this market uh, turns over till tomorrow, we'll see, we'll see this thing zeroing out, but you can see We've had a buy and then we had another buy and it didn't go anywhere. So we're, we're starting to see it roll over. The PPMs are really flat. They're very similar to what SPY has been doing. Uh, there's been a, there's a slight, let me see if I can blow this up and get a, what I'm hoping to get is a, a, a better, better perspective of the chart. Yeah, this does help a bit. You can see that 
prices broke down pretty good last week. And they're starting to see uh, some momentum build, but not a lot. But the fact that the, the patterns are broken, you see this um, is a classic what I've been talking about is the red line is the 10 period moving average. It's about to get uh, to move toward crossing the 20, the 21 and the longer term average here, if I bring that up real quick, longer term average is actually, uh, where are we at here? 1132 here. So it's the market's just, uh, Hang on, I've got a got an issue going here. Okay, there we go. Uh, we're at 10.86 on a longer term average. The current last trade on this thing is 10.87. So we're setting right at the 40 period moving right average. There, yeah. And a break through that is going to get us uh, definitely uh, to move some more momentum to the downside. So this the pattern's broken. That's why why this thing's being sold out. And it has everything to do with what I was just talking about in yields and what's going on. Cool. So what else you got there, Mitch? Uh, another bond fund that we sold out of this week is the, uh, the TW, or TCW Emerging Markets Income, ticker is TGEIX. TGEIX. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so what, what is that a one two? I thought it was. Uh, give me one second. Yeah, so anyway, the, the same same pattern uh, minus 0.15. See if I can get this to blow up a little bit here. Uh, not really doing a lot. It's not really showing a lot that's going on right now. So, this obviously, this thing has started to break down. We're starting to see the PPMs get down to 0 0.15 and that's, yeah, the pattern, the pattern's definitely broken and I suspect that most of these, of these patterns that we look at on the bonds are gonna look pretty similar. Yeah, I think you're right on that. So how, how about something exciting? Uh, well, let's talk about Microsoft or, or there you go, Apple. Apple's got the yeah. iPhone. Yeah, so we, we talked about this pattern last week that was going on. There's a continuation. I believe we still own this stock. And uh, we saw some gyration late in the week, but uh, the continuation of the pattern, we're at 0 0.72, 0 0.105, and 0.68 on the PPM 1, 2, and 3. Very robust uptrend. Doesn't appear that this thing is done. They sold, what, four and a half million new phones and uh, biggest ever and so whether they can supply it. And then the other thing that's happening here, and one of the things with these larger screens and uh, that, that are coming out, that here in the US, we're sitting here on our PCs and we have all kinds of devices around. Uh, other places in the world, the only screen they have that's hooked to the internet is probably their mobile device. Right. It, it, is, it is the primary tool that people in a lot of places, that's all they have. And especially in Asia and so that uh, in China in specific so there's probably from a fundamental standpoint there's probably a lagging effect because uh, by the time they rotate through the US demand and international uh, Western world demand then China is probably going to pick up the slack at some point although you know even with these you have to understand in China that it, it's a status symbol to own one of these things so if you've got if you got enough to buy it you're gonna you're gonna flaunt it uh, the best you can, and that's that's one of the things. Um, uh, what year is this getting to be? So in in 2003, I was in China for a better part of a month, and uh, the biggest thing there was if you had the ability, which and this is the big status symbol, is because of the one-child policy. The, you can actually have more children; you just have to pay tax to support them, and it's a big status symbol. It will be walking around with two, three four kids walking around with you it's it's big time and uh, with the middle class growing there and everything that's happening that's that's still a status from that standpoint so i suspect apple uh, this trend still looks good we don't have any fibonacci projections we've actually satisfied all those right now 
So there's probably no new patterns that are gonna come out. We can go over and maybe take a look at the uh, longer term, although I'm clicking and nothing's happening, which is always exciting. Um, yeah, that's nice. So let me uh, try one thing here. Yeah, nothing's working. That's nice. That's that's really handy in the middle. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Everything I clicked on now is going to pop up. <laughs> Except for what I want. Here we go. I think I'm back. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. We are uh, broadcasting this screen in several different ways. Here we go. Everything seems to be slack, but looking at some of the yeah, I'm still not getting any response here. I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, let's go here. There, now, now, yeah, I mean, there's stuff. Things I clicked on five minutes ago are coming up. I'm catching up, yeah. yeah. Yeah, look at this. I mean, this, this stuff's all over the place. So, interesting. Um, anyway, so just to kind of summarize here, hopefully the, the, this thing, yeah, it's still changing and, and doing things. You can see... Uh, the market's rallying back. This is usually like where I, I like to come to. So we're, we're, we're getting back here right now. Um, yeah, I'm getting all kinds of uh, really odd things going on with this computer at the moment. Uh, but the, the market has, has rallied back a bit and we're seeing um, only down two and a quarter. Like I said, uh, there's not really a lot that's gonna go on here as far as the before the FOMC meeting and the economics, nothing's really bad, nothing's really good. So it's, this thing's just gonna consolidate here, I suspect, until uh, the end of the week. So when we, when we get to looking at things on Friday, um, yeah, I might actually have control again. Nope, I don't. Uh, when we get back to uh, the Friday show, we'll be able to see what the outcome of of the FOMC meeting was all of the different elements that were that we're looking at as far as as far as all the uh, uh, you know the, I guess what what's going to happen to rates what's going to happen to the markets all of those things are going to come into play I'm, I'm desperately trying to get back in control here I'm going to um, I'm going to end a session that Mitch is on hoping that um, I'm getting DLL errors, all kinds of fun stuff. Now I'm, I'm just, I'm done. You got a nice screen. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Sedona. Um, yeah, nothing's working here. So I guess we'll we'll go over to. Uh, look, there it comes up. Crazy stuff, folks. We haven't had that's the first time I've ever seen that. So we'll just go off on our market thunder screen and and summarize this show. The the whole basis of what I want to continue to emphasize with everybody is that we are bumping up against very, very long-term resistance. And it's not even resistance. I think it's long-term valuation that is going to be very tough to match going forward. I just don't see what's going to happen out of the environment that's going to be able to make it so, so good. I know that uh, the uh, research department at LPL was touting the three R's. They were that was their big. They managed to get that story on CNBC, and you know maybe everybody's going to start spending and everything's wonderful and all that. I'm not sure that's the case. I think there's a lot of challenges ahead. There are some elements that it appears they're dot comish, and when you start to look at some of these IPOs. I mean, we didn't mention Alibaba. I mean, that is the whole thing this week, right? Uh, everybody's watching that. So I've heard people say that, well, hey, you know, how this how this IPO goes will tell you a lot about market conditions. And maybe that's the case. And it's a huge offering. And we'll see how it all, all, all plays out. But in the end, I think that the, that the markets are at a very, very big turning point and that it, it may be watching paint grow or paint dry for the next several several months forming this top. But it a lot of times once you start to get some traction, certain things happen, then the market sentiment changes, that will drive things much quicker. And and in two thousand and fourteen, everybody has uh the, the this thing on their desk, Mr. Mouse, 
and Mr. Mouse can click and sell and do things that it was much harder to to get into a liquidation mode. So we know we've seen plenty of plenty of issues in the past of this thing going on. So anyway, uh, from a standpoint of, I expect that we're going to see maybe a little softening into the close. I always talk about what's going on with the markets in the final minute or so. My expectation to see the markets stay pretty much where they are now, probably staying in negative territory. I don't think they'll get even have a chance to get over R1, which is 1988-85. If they did, then we could go a little higher, but there's a lot of resistance overhead and not a lot of people looking to buy this thing. So my, my best bet is that probably if we continue to stay firm here for the next about an hour or so, hour and a half, we've got a, a cycle that's due in and that will should be a high cycle and we should see some softening into the close. If nothing else, we'll see see the market moving back into the range. And we're seeing you know that the NASDAQ is just getting hammered down 44. We didn't, didn't mention that. It's, it's down pretty good numbers, about three quarters of a, of a percent and S&P flat as we've talked about and all that. So anyway, folks, uh, thanks again for showing up. We'll be back on Friday and we will be uh, 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 talking to you then. So have a great day.